It's a lost cause, brother. As long as you and I are Team Leanne, Dorothy won't have anything to do with this. I'm not Team Leanne. You sure about that? Hey everyone, Brent the Middleman, your middle-aged middle manager, and I'm still Team Leanne. The show has tried really hard the last couple of episodes to make Dorothy sympathetic and turn Leanne into a villain, but I'm sorry, it's just not working. Leanne may have broken a kid's arm and tried to scare a little girl, but they'll live. When what Dorothy did, even though it was a tragic accident, is still unforgivable. As always, if you're enjoying the videos, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing, and I'll use my powers to make all your dreams come true. In episode 3, Dorothy is getting desperate to walk again so she can deal with Leanne herself, so the Golden Girls decide to do a seance to help clear the negative energy. The seance starts off looking like the typical scam, with the tall Golden Girl using the old, I'm seeing the letter B, or um, is it a P? Once she says she made contact with Dorothy and Julian's mom, she reminds Dorothy how she used to climb into bed with her when she had nightmares. Julian, as usual, isn't buying it. Dorothy is all in. Then the golden girl starts to see a black shadow moving in the house and can hear a baby crying out for help, and it starts to seem like she's the real deal. Or she's just been binge-watching old episodes of Lost. Julian and Sean are trying to get her to shut it down before they remind poor old Dorothy that she killed her baby. Luckily for them, Leanne had seen enough too, and she slams the church's dagger down on the table. The Golden Girls claim to not know what it is, so Leanne pulls the shirt off the tall one to look for whip marks, which is a sign that she's part of the wacko church cult, since they punish themselves by whipping their own backs. There are no marks, and Leanne storms out. Don't worry, I'm sure everyone will just pretend like nothing happened. The episode ends with Leanne having a nightmare about a black shadow moving throughout the house, and we see through Dorothy's eyes that she has climbed into bed with her, just like Dorothy used to do with her mom. So we can see that Leanne still views Dorothy as her mother figure, and now Dorothy may realize that she can exploit this to finally get rid of Leanne. I'm still not sure what to think of the Golden Girls, I predicted last video that they were part of the church, and Dorothy knew that, but now I'm not so sure. They definitely are intuitive, as they gave Sean, Julian, and Leanne books that could really help their current situations, and they seem to know that Leanne got rid of the doll they gave to Jericho number 2, and then replaced it. And of course, they lit Sage, which obviously means they are those crazy, but fun for a short time, types of girls. And of course, Julian helps confirm this, by finding a box of sex toys under their bed. Julian is actually growing on me this season, and hopefully nothing starts growing on him after touching that thing. To wrap up episode 3, we also saw that Dorothy finally was willing to eat some of Sean's food, which is definitely a sign that they could soon be a team again. I'm not sure if the Black Cloud is supposed to be Leanne or Jericho number 1, or just all the bad vibes in that house. We see at the beginning of episode 4, the Halloween episode, that Leanne thinks the Black Cloud is her, and that she is really liking the way that being bad feels. I like how the show set us up to think that Uncle George and Aunt May and the church cult were the bad guys for how they were using Leanne, but it turns out that they knew exactly what they were doing, harnessing her powers for good. The Turners were just such awful people that they were able to help Leanne turn into this smoke monster. Dorothy is watching old episodes of her reporting on Halloween, and we see that her and Sean are finally connecting again. I had a commenter say on the last video that he thinks all of this is taking place in Dorothy's head after she killed Jericho 1, and Leanne and the church are all made up. She is just watching old videos of herself reporting on the news, and these are feeding her delusions. I hope I did the comment justice, as it was definitely original, and I would love it if it was something like this. Unfortunately, I'm not sure that the writers are this clever. Oh well. Leanne finds the Golden Girls in the attic going through chests of old creepy Halloween costumes, and just like I suspected, everyone is acting like Leanne didn't just threaten to kill them in front of everyone. Oh, Leanne. Julian and Sean then have the Team Leanne talk, where Julian finally wakes Sean up to the fact that all of his recent success is due to Leanne. He also makes Sean feel bad for being Team Leanne and not Team Dorothy, which ultimately helps push him back to his wife. I'm still Team Leanne at this point, but let me know in the comments who your choice is. The Golden Girls dress Jericho number 2 up like a pumpkin, 
and Dorothy doesn't like it. When she tries to remember what she dressed Jericho up like the year before, she can't remember because he was dead. For a second, I thought she might remember what happened, but nope, I'm sure that's being saved for the finale. We see that Leanne has been spying on the neighbors with the security system, and she is more paranoid than ever. But it's really hard to blame her if all the attacks we've seen really took place. She takes the chests of costumes to her homeless army and commands them to dress up and wreak havoc on the neighborhood on Halloween so she can lure out church members so she can kill them. Yeah, what could go wrong? The Golden Girls then show Dorothy the second costume for Jericho number two, and it's right on the nose. They have him dressed up like a lobster in a pot, which is exactly what Dorothy did to Jericho number one in the car on that summer day. They said it was Sean's idea, which, if not intentional, was definitely his subconscious trying to mess with Dorothy. Leanne then dresses up like a creepy yet strangely sexy doll. It's unfortunate this show isn't as popular as Wednesday, because otherwise we might see this costume more this upcoming Halloween, like we'll see a thousand Wednesdays. Somehow Julian is able to withstand her advances because he's been put on candy duty and doesn't want to give her any almond joy. Yeah, I'm sorry about that one. Leanne then decides to drag a trick-or-treater into the house and scare the crap out of her because Leanne is an almond joy and not a mounds because she's nuts. Okay, I promise no more almond joy candy puns. Poor old lovesick Toby then shows up in a skeleton costume and wants to give Leanne a bone, but she's focused on her mission. When she's finally able to ditch Toby, she then freaks out some of the normal neighbors and breaks a kid's arm. But honestly, that kid had it coming. We get a flash to Sean looking at the railing where Dorothy fell, as he's starting to realize that Leanne is causing all the good and bad things that are happening. Wow, finally dude. Back out on the street, we see Roscoe getting freaked out by people having fun in the park on Halloween. I mean, how dare they? And we get one more scene of Leanne scaring a child to help try to get us off Team Leanne for good, just like Sean is about to. Didn't work on me though, still Team Leanne. Roscoe then runs into Uncle George, who's been sneaking around as a ghost, and we see that Uncle George's teeth are rotting away just like the Turner's house in the neighborhood. George tells Roscoe that the Turners are about to turn against Leanne, which makes me wonder if the Golden Girls really are spies for the church. George also lets us all know that the stakes of not stopping Leanne aren't just the downfall of the Turner family and their neighborhood, but the entire world. So yeah, no pressure. Leanne returns home from her failed mission and finds Sean on the couch. Sean tells her that he doesn't want all the success if it means losing Dorothy, and Leanne tells him to grow up and accept his choices. This was the final straw for Sean, as it confirms what he finally realized about Leanne, and he goes to tell Dorothy that he's back on her side. So Sean is Team Dorothy again, and I think the show is hoping that we are too. I'm still Team Leanne, as I feel like she was forced into a lot of this and corrupted by the self-centered Turner family. But who knows, maybe I'll switch teams by the end. I'd love to hear in the comments which side you're on, and if you're Team Middleman, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing. It would really mean a lot to me. As always, here are a couple other videos to watch while you wait for the next one. Thanks again for watching. I'm Brent the Middleman, and I'll see you next time.